Hello there everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to kind of construct your roster. I'm not going to tell you like X highwaymen, X vestals, but I'm going to give you kind of like a healer, utility, and damage, and kind of how you should spread those across, and also how to manage your heroes on in the very early and maybe even slightly middle game, but mostly very early. Now you can see I just got done with week five. I've played a couple of weeks. And the reason for that is I wanted to unlock all the buildings, get the five weeks, get a roster size that's, you know, bearable. And now I kind of want to talk about how to initially weed out your bad heroes. When you first start the game, you can't really choose any of the skills obviously you have. So if your people come with rather bad skills, such as this situation, well actually these skills aren't terrible. Where's the Houndmaster? Yeah, like this just doesn't really, it's not my preferred preferred method of a Houndmaster and sometimes your teams will be very poorly constructed because of that reason. So that's going to happen. So let's just talk about when to get rid of heroes. You're going to see you have a couple of afflictions. I actually should have had three visit graveyard boom dead uh, was afflicted. But that anti-coring was important and that's uh, something I'm just going to hold off on a little bit. But typically, once your heroes hit affliction, let's just boop them on out. There's no point to really keep them around in camp. Uh, especially if you have the opportunity to, once again, pick up another guy with, I would argue, the ram parts a little better and stuff. So I like them. So yeah, we can just pick them up. Boom. No harm lost. Dismissing doesn't count as a death. As you can see, they don't die. They just leave. Other really problematic things. A lot of quirks. Now, this is Reynolds. Reynold is uh, part of an achievement and also starting character, so there's emotional emotional sentiment. Usually you don't get rid of them. But if this was a normal Crusader, I would take this guy through just all the most terrible dungeons. Um, well, Kleptomaniac would actually be something I would want to almost get rid of him initially for, but we'll, we'll get off his quirk there. Here's where the fun begins. I just got rid of Vestal and I got two more. In the early game... It depends on how you do it. If you're playing on the hardest difficulty, you probably shouldn't be watching this video because most likely you know how to construct rosters. And if you're starting out on the highest difficulty, I would highly recommend doing one darkest run through just to get used to the game. If you don't have time, that's your own opinion. You can do, do, do whatever. But this is mostly for darkest and radiant players. So you can take it a little easier. And that's what I'm playing on right now is radiant. In the beginning, you can kind of just... <sighs> do what I call use and abuse parties. So right here I have increased the number of available heroes to four and what that allows me to do is every week I get four brand new heroes and I can essentially go into the dungeon and just start going anywhere. Start abusing them. Doesn't matter how they turn out in the end. It's just all for money and progressing to get different heroes. Heroes that I think are really good early on are honestly Anticoriums. They're very weak. The skills she had on were okay, some of her better skills, but not amazing. But the reason why they're really good is you can get a lot of money. I've only done five weeks, and I have like 40,000 gold already. And I also spent, and not a lot, but an okay amount actually getting skills and whatnot. So, having an early Anticorium is huge. Uh, it's always good to have Vestals early on as well. Uh, especially uh, uh, Vestals with Dazzling Light and these three. These three abilities are probably the only ones you're really going to use the whole game. So this Vestal is pretty good. This Vestal, I would really consider probably buying these two. And with her, I'd probably just finish it out buying Judgment. And if you come over here, and I don't often like buying skills, but since I've played the game a little more than probably the average person, I would feel confident that that 1600 gold I'm sinking into that individual will be worth it that I won't be losing or turning out this individual quickly. However, what I would recommend is you're slightly newer to the game. She had three out of the four skills equipped right here that I, and honestly, like these are the skills I probably use 90, 95% of the time. So there's really not a reason to buy that judgment, but I would in my situation probably plan on keeping her. Cause like I said, I'm a little more used to the game, but yeah, don't, a tip is, and just general money, don't buy everything for people right away because most likely you're going to be turning them out rather quick in the first 10 to 15 weeks. Now, by week 15, well, it's really tough to say, by week 10 to 15, I would start to highly consider saving certain characters because eventually you, you do got to get out of the early game. 
the game will progress as your resolve levels progress. So if you actually keep people at like resolve 0 and 1 the whole time, yeah, you theoretically never have to get out of apprentice level dungeons. However, you can't really continue either that way. And now I'm just going to quickly mention that healer, utility, and damage oriented again. And we'll kind of go through the people I have here, and I'll talk about a couple you're not seeing on the screen. Actually, there's a lot you're not seeing on the screen. Vessels are obvious healers. If you get a bandage onto an arbalist, you can make do with it. And same with the... Uh... Yeah, well, they're the same people. Yeah, sorry. These two can kind of get away with it early on because even the Vestals, I mean, their, their main heals four to five, and you figure there's two to three, and it will ramp up the more you heal one person. So that's not terrible. You don't need to look for someone who's going to, like, try to, like, beef up their heals to massive limits or anything. Early on, three to two to three HP heals will be enough. What you really want early on is some good damage dealers and just someone to keep people off death door. So that's why Vestals work so well. Even though it's one HP, it'll keep you off death door. Also a decent stun, positions 1 and 3. Highwaymen are highly recommended when they have like Wicked Slice and Point Blank and Repost. Literally missing the three best skills on this Dismas, which is just terrible. Once again, Dismas is one of the starting characters. So I feel confident buying those skills. And then if I was to load him out, it would probably be those four skills most likely. Tends to be the Highwaymen special. Plague Doctor is honestly pretty good. If you get Blinding Gas, you can, um, so you could do something like that. That's a pretty good setup. Or if you want to get another stun in there, stuns are always great. That's a pretty good setup. The Plague Doctor is kind of a damage utility role. Um, the Crusader is mostly damage utility. I mean, you could get that 2 to 3 HP heal or Inspiring Cry. But for the most part, stress healing in the early game isn't a huge deal. You're going to be turning out so many people anyways that stress healing isn't exactly worth it yet however inspiring cry in the late game is amazing so for the most part uh, i'd put on holy lance i'd take off bulwark probably and then have these three skills in holy lance lepers are obviously just pure damage i wow these are like probably the least used skill wow least used skills i would use and let's see this is the problem you run into if you don't have a lot of money to keep buying the skills you want if you absolutely have to just buy a skill don't waste any more time. If you're like, I need heal, just put on heal. Arbalist Musketeers, damage slash utility, because they do have suppressing fire, which can, where is it? Right there, smoke screen on this person. Minus accuracy, minus crit chance. It's actually huge at level one. Minus 15 accuracy will probably take those 80 to 90 accuracies and bring them the whole ways down to 60, 65. So that could actually help you dodge a little bit. Flages can technically be damage slash utility with a uh, redeem and reclaim. Mana Arms are mostly utility with a little bit of damage. I would recommend, and now this is where I kind of start getting into where I do actually recommend people. For my own sake, I think every character in this game actually has a position on your roster, so have at least one of everybody on your roster. You may not like Mana Arms, but there are about, I think, two to three bosses where they actually are extremely useful. So I highly recommend one of Mana Arms, even two, just in case something happens to your first one. But one should be more than enough. Antiquariums, always good for money. Recommend one of them. Vestals, I'm going to put that in the healer category. There's other people called occultists in this game, and they are like the second best healer, I guess, depending on RNG. I would probably recommend having at least one occultist. I think occultists are better offensive weapons. They can be used in mark comps a little more. They got some pooling and stuff like that. So I do like occultists in your lineup. If you had three Vestals and one Occultist, I think that'd be more than enough to be safe, and it also won't slog down your whole roster. If you want to be absolutely safe, you could go four Vestals and one Occultist. That'd be so much heals that even if someone's in a sanitarium and someone doesn't have their maxed out weapons and someone got a bad quirk, you should still have a Vestal and an Occultist to pick from. But when it comes down to damage, that's really going to be dependent on your play style. As I said, some people, they like the much faster speed style where everyone's going to have about 8 to 9 speed, but you're going to be a little bit more on the fragile end. But that's okay, because if you kill your enemies quickly, they obviously can't respond. And some people, like how I used to play the game, I really liked a Leper and a Crusader front row, and then I'd have someone like the Jester where the Highwaymen in the back. I'd have these two big, big guys. I have the Vestal in the fourth position, healing and studying. So that's always a possibility. Houndmasters are really good eventually. 
They have some good campfire skills, such as scouting. Scouting becomes huge, especially once you start getting to um, consistent medium level dungeons and veteran, and then eventually champion. Scouting in general will save you from traps, make medium dungeons easier, make scouting dungeon types easier. What I mean by that is when you have to find things to make them really easy. So I do recommend a couple of Houndmaster. Bounty Hunters are also good for scouting. So are Grave Robbers. People really like Grave Robbers. They're an excellent damage choice. So when it comes to your damage, I can't particularly say have like 22 damage characters, 8 utility characters, and like 4 healing. In the end, you're really going to have to just figure out where your, your ebb and flow is. If I had to put a number on healers, like I said, I'd probably on the super safe end put 5, on the more reserved end 3 to 4. That should be really enough. If you do lose one, it does become a little bit of a pain, but not too terribly much. And what you also have to watch out, and the reason why you can't have too few healers is if you have to bring a healer to every dungeon, they're going to massively outlevel everyone else. So you, that's why you do need about maybe three to four main healers and then a class kind of like the Arbalist and Crusader and maybe Antiquarium. Where you know what? They heal, but they're not particularly the biggest heals, but you kind of need them in those quick strike lineups. Because like I said, you can't have eight to ten. Well, you could. I mean, no one's stopping you. You could have eight to ten healers, but it's kind of boring. You're not going to get a lot of party variation. And I do believe this game made every hero pretty useful. So even heroes who can heal themselves, such as the Leper here, 6 HP and you can use it all the time, why not? You can self-heal with that and be just fine. Same with an Abomination on here, they have Absolution, they can heal themselves. So characters who can heal themselves and even just other minor heals will be enough to get you through the early game and even the mid game, so don't be afraid if you're like, oh no, I don't have a Vestal or Cultus, it'll be okay. Enemies aren't doing like 22 damage crits and all that. So with the lack of damage in the early game, you can get away with a lot of aggressive parties. Now I will admit, you still probably want at least a heal or two, because once someone goes to death's door and they die, well once they go to death's door and you have no form to heal outside of food, we're pretty much going to have to call that a night and wrap that party comp up. So I would recommend at least a targeted heal, such as someone like the Arbalist, Musketeer, Vestal, I mean, even the Plague Doctor can get you off Death's Door with one. It's one HP, but hey, it's one HP. It's enough to get you off Battlefield, Inspiring Cry. But if you have one heal and it's something like this, well, that's only going to work on yourself. That's not going to save your buddy dying in the back row. So keep that in mind. And just to reiterate, when to get rid of people, because I don't know if I hit that very hard. Once people essentially hit near 100 stress, or they have a couple of quirks you're not particularly fond of dump them it's not worth it if you don't have a time limit if you're not playing on the hardest difficulty it doesn't matter how many weeks you take and it's not worth getting someone down from 80 stress just to take them out and get them back up to 80 stress so what i'll probably actually do right here since the musketeer and arbalist are the same the musketeer has now this is what you also need to consider which negative quirks ruin? Because uh, this is three negative quirks. Nervous is pretty bad. Soft's pretty bad. Kofo, not so much. But then we only have fear against mankind. But that's also kind of bad. So in reality, I could actually take these two out, run them into a ground, take them to a hundred stress, get rid of both of them, and just wait for a new person to show up in the stagecoach. Eventually, the hero barracks, like only eight deeds, that's not bad. And if you look it up online, I believe it's the, let's go look, I believe it's the wield gives you deeds, right? Yeah, so I could pick the wield, identify deeds directly, get eight of those, eight of those, expand my roster, and then we'd be good. So if I was to choose the next mission, Winded's not bad. I don't know, since it doesn't have another quirk to lock in, but I kind of do want to keep the Plague Doctor. They're really good, and I don't have another one, so I'm going to hold off on bringing the Plague Doctor. But if I was to start a new mission here... Definitely being bringing the leper. I'd definitely bring a vestal with the new skills, and this is where the fun could be in. You know, I could do like a shield breaker and arbalist. Boom! There we go. We got some row diversity. Row diversity stun, massive damage to chopping hue in the front. If you want to, you could even go flage. Now that's two DLC characters. You don't want if you don't have DLC characters. Let's make a party without DLC characters. I could even bring Dismas in if I want. It wouldn't get him to resolve too. And he's got, you know, Wicked Slice. He's a really strong choice. 
Or if you want, get a Man at Arms back in there, you got Ramparts. I mean, there's a lot of good comps you could make right away to get through the wheel pretty quickly. On the off chance that obviously she gets an Affliction, which is pretty high because there's no Stress Minus in this group. You get rid of her. And the one last thing... Oh my gosh. And the one th last thing I'm going to say, though, is I would recommend probably having about, probably on the safer end, three gestures. And the reason why I say that is, is they're pretty fragile. And they're honestly good in a lot of parties, so you'll, you'll probably end up using them a lot. And since they're one of the best stress healers in the game, they're going to become, ex they're going to be exponentially more important in the veteran and champion level. And you don't want to just pigeonhole yourself to two, because they will get to resolve five very quickly. And next thing you know, you'll have a whole bunch of level 3s and level 4s left, and you're wondering how to get easy stress heal. So, I'd probably say about 4 or 5 main healers on the super safe end. 3 jesters, that's already about a fourth of your roster in the end. I believe you can go up to 32. Will it say how many? Was that uh, 17, 21, 25, 29? It's like 30, it's like 30-ish or something. So yeah, you figure you almost have a third of your roster already there between Occultist, Vestals, and Gestures, and then you can slam the other characters in there, and then you can you can duplicate some of the damage dealers you like. So, that's what I would do. If you have another, any other questions, please feel free to ask. It's very hard to make a video about this because people have so many different play styles that recommending a roster is rather difficult. You have to more look at it, as I said before. Healers utility and damage and kind of how to blend those together and that's just a generic idea as well you don't really even need healers per se i mean i think they will help you out but i've made quick strike parties before without really strong identifiable healers as i said before i've had comps where the arbalist and crusader are the healers and the rest of it is just like super quick strike damage where I've had high dodge parties with not a lot of heals where I relied on food to keep me off that store and stuff after fights. So you never you don't always have to use healers. But if you're newer to the game, it does make the game easier for the first time around. But I will admit it can limit your aggression if you have like eight vestals in your roster. Because they're very static in the back row. If you have eight vestals, yeah, like I said, it just it just feels very static after a while and doesn't necessarily allow you for a lot of interesting party comps. Thank you so much for watching.